Hi, I'm John Teal, um, one of the engineers on the K2000. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the convenience features that the K2000 provides. Don't be afraid to play the K2000 from within one of its editors. The K2000 provides a lot of ways to get around the instrument. One very powerful feature is the previous page button. When you're in one of the editors, pressing the previous page button will bring you back to the last page you were on. It actually remembers the last four pages you were on, so pressing it repeatedly will bring you to each of those four pages. Another powerful feature in the K2000 are the jump and mark buttons. These allow you to mark certain pages in an editor, and then by using the jump button, jump between those marked pages. It allows you to mark any number of pages in the editor. If you want, you can mark all the pages. Let's take a quick look at the display. Notice the highlighted choices at the bottom of the display. The octave minus and octave plus allow you to quickly transpose, as you can see in the upper middle portion of the LCD. The panic button allows you to send the all notes off command to external devices. The view button resizes the program name. There are two modes, large and small. The display allows six programs to be visible at the same time and are shown in smaller type. The channel minus and channel plus buttons allow you to change the MIDI channel you're on. Also in this mode, to the left of the program names, is a large drop shadow rectangle showing you how many layers are in this program, the key map number, and name. The top illuminated bar shows you that you are in program mode, whether or not the program has been transposed, and the MIDI channel you are on. The display will appear the same in setup mode, except that MIDI and program information will be displayed in the drop shadow box instead of the key map and program names. In quick access, the view button just resizes the program or setup selected. Before we begin basic programming, we're going to disable the effects so you can hear the quality of the sound and filters clearly. To disable your effects, press the effects button. Press your down cursor to illuminate the wet dry percentage. Press the zero button on the keypad and press enter. You have now successfully disabled your reverb. To return to the program mode, press the program button. You may want to listen to the raw sampled sounds before you start editing them. To do this, we'll call up program 999 test program which you loaded in at the beginning of this video. Press the button numbered 9 on the keypad three times, then press enter. You have now called up program 999, test program. Press the edit button and you will see the main edit screen. You are now looking at the basic building block of the variable architecture synthesizer, the algorithm. The boxes from left to right represent the signal path through the K2000. Each box in an algorithm represents an individual module. Take a moment to turn your alpha wheel to view some of the other algorithms. You will notice that the signal flow changes as do the number of active modules. As you'll see, each module can have several possible functions other than the one you currently see. Turn your alpha wheel back to algorithm one to continue. In the display from left to right, you will notice the following options. More, used to shift the pages on the bottom backwards. Algorithm, used to select the algorithm page. Layer, where you can adjust the parameters such as keyboard range and delay as well as enabling or disabling controllers. Key map, where you select the various sampled waveforms. Pitch, where you can control the pitch of the waveform. And more, to advance to the next set of pages. We'll explore these a bit more in the next example. Press the button under the key map page and you'll see Grand Piano. 
turn your alpha wheel, press your minus plus buttons to scroll through waveforms or enter the waveforms number on the keypad. This is how we select a waveform. You may now want to pause the tape and listen to the raw waveforms. But before continuing, please return to the grand piano key map. Now, let's return to the algorithm page and begin editing. Press the button under algorithm. It will be very helpful to understand what we mean when we say a variable architecture and just how sound is created. As you already know, a program can contain up to three layers. Before you can understand the layer, you first have to understand the fundamental building block of a layer and the heart of vast architecture, the algorithm. My name is Jennifer Haruska, and I'm a soundware engineer at uh, Kurzweil, Young Chang. Uh, Kurzweil has always had this reputation of being a company that provides sort of high quality multi samples for sound playback, sample playback. Um, and certainly this machine will do that in addition, but uh, we spent quite a bit of time here trying to put together the, the greatest synthesizer that we could. And uh, so I wanted to show you just a couple of things that it can do. Um, of course, if you, if you bought this machine specifically for Kurzweil's uh, samples of electronic and, and acoustic instruments, then you definitely won't be disappointed. I've certainly spent enough time in my dark padded room here pouring over loop points and, and uh, key ranges and stuff like that to make it sound good. Uh, but there's so much more you can do. For example, this is just a pretty straight ahead string sound, ensemble strings. nice and it sounds pretty good and everything but you can take that same string sample and you can get something that will sound like this and that's just one layer of string but so suddenly we sound like we're in the middle of the Amazon forest somewhere with birds and water just going on all over the place. And uh, that was accomplished by taking that same string sample, just one layer, and putting it through a series of bandpass filters, and uh, then modulating those bandpass filters with uh, something that we call FUNS, F-U-N-S, fun with FUNS. Uh, that's short for functions. And functions can be used in a variety of ways, everything from uh, putting two control sources together and trying to weigh one a little more than the other to providing sort of random modulation of uh, string samples such as this or any sample really to, um, to get a variety of effects like the birds and, and water type of sound that we just heard. So that's one interesting thing you can do with the samples uh, either in ROM or, or samples that you load into uh, RAM. It doesn't matter either way. Um, Another type of synthesis that was really popular not too long ago was the D50 style LA synthesis, which was, you know, the, the real chiffy kind of sound. And that was mostly accomplished by taking attack transients, which were little short little samples, and, and attaching them onto other waveforms. And, and uh, we've provided that a very similar type of synthesis like that. So if you're into the chiff, we've got lots of chiff for you. Or if you are an analog synthesizer buff and you've got Moogs and Mellotrons lining your, your studio walls, um, we should let you know that the K2000 has uh, on the order of 96 oscillators inside of it. And yes, you can stack those all up on a single key if you want to. And uh, 96, that's a real number, and that's a lot of oscillators. That's, uh, that's a far cry from, the, um, from the, the typical synthesizers that come out that have, you know, two, four, six, maybe eight oscillators that you have to detune, you know, quite a bit in order to get them to sound pretty fat. Um, 
it, it's not actually analog. It, it is still digital, but it sure sounds analog. Um, I'll give you an example of that. Actually, that was only two oscillators, so <laughs> you've got another 94 to go on that one. VAST is, is what we have termed this synthesizer, and uh, not just because it sounds cool, but because it stands for Variable Architecture Synthesis Technology, and that's exactly what it is. Um, on each single channel, you can choose a style of synthesis and then combine that with another style of synthesis on another channel and stack them all up and, uh, and just get incredible sounds. So enjoy. Don't be afraid to dig into your synthesizer a little bit. It's actually pretty easy to use. And uh, even if you just go in there and start playing around some parameters, you're going to come up with some really cool stuff. As the term algorithm applies to the K2000, an algorithm can be explained as a set of rules or instructions. Think of an algorithm as the boundaries and markers, the basic tools that you can use to create your expressive custom sounds. This will become more obvious as we begin programming. There are 31 different algorithms available to you, each offering different possibilities of how you can create and shape the sound. Some algorithms allow you to use four oscillators or sound sources at the same time without eating up any of the 24 voices. Some allow for dynamic stereo panning, parametric EQ, and so on. In algorithm one, you'll notice three boxes which represent the synthesis modules used in the current algorithm. Algorithm one uses three modules. Some use more. The maximum number is five. The first module is pitch. All algorithms start with a pitch module. You can't select any other function for this module other than pitch. However, there are many parameters you can use to control pitch, such as velocity, mono pressure, LFOs, and many others. The middle block is currently marked none. However, this block offers many possibilities. Press the down cursor one time and highlight the middle block. Rotate the alpha wheel to the right and you will see high freak stimulator, a function which works like an oral exciter, enhancing the upper frequencies necessary for a bright rock piano or a sharp steel string guitar. Press the edit button and notice the top of the display shows you edit program one, page F1, frequency of the high frequency stimulator, and that this program has one layer and that's the one you're editing. Press the right more button one time and you will see F1 frequency, F2 drive, F3 amplitude, and F4 amplitude. The F4 amplitude page is for adjusting the overall volume of this particular layer. The F1 through F3 keys apply to the stimulator. Most of the editing pages will look like this one, so once you're familiar with this page, you'll quickly know your way around. You'll notice a coarse and fine adjustment for setting the frequencies you wish to excite. Key track, allowing for the keyboard to control the excited frequencies. Velocity track, allowing you to control the effect by touch and a pad in case you overdrive this module. Yes, you can intentionally cause your K2000 to clip or distort if you choose. However, we recommend you have very tolerant speakers. On the right half of the display, you'll notice source one and depth. You can assign any controller to act as a source input and below set the desired active depth. Below source one and depth is source two for an additional modulation source. Depth control allowing you to assign any controller like pedals, wheels, or slider to control the modulation source, minimum depth for a constant level of modulation, and maximum depth to be reached by adjusting the depth controller. This is useful for creating rotor speaker effects where there's a slow rotor turning and at the flick of a wheel, a sudden speeding up to the fast speed. Later, you can listen to program 998, Tone Wheel Organ. But now, let's do some editing. Before we adjust any parameters, let's listen to the unedited program.
Let's set the course frequency control to C0, 16 hertz, by rotating your alpha wheel to the left. Next, let's set source one to mod wheel. Press your right cursor one time, and you will have highlighted source one. Rotate your alpha wheel slowly to the right until you see M wheel. Take a moment and scroll through the various control sources available to you. They are extremely abbreviated, and a complete description of each is available in your user's manual. When you get back to M wheel, stop. Press your down cursor one time and highlight depth. Rotate your alpha wheel to the right until you see 10,800 cents. Next, press the button under the F2 option and notice the top bar informs you that you are now on the high frequency drive page. This screen offers almost the same choices as the last one. Set the adjust to 4 dB using your alpha wheel. Set source 1 to M wheel using your cursor and alpha wheel. Now set the depth below source 1 to 12 dB. Next, press the button under F3 and you will arrive at the high frequency stimulator amplitude page where you can boost or cut the effects volume. Let's set the adjust to 2 dB. Now, play the piano sample and move the mod wheel up and down to notice the effect. Press the left more button and you will have brought back the main screen once again allowing you to select the algorithm page. Press the button under the algorithm option and you will see high frequency stimulator illuminated. Now let's try a different effect. Rotate your alpha wheel slowly to the right and you will notice the display changes to parametric EQ. Parametric EQ allows for precise adjustment and contouring of the harmonic frequencies of a sound, like putting a little extra punch in your kick drum or a little more snap in your slap bass. Turn the alpha wheel again and you see steep resonant bass. Steep resonant bass offers a powerful resonant filter and a bass boost for the ultimate analog synth bass. Let's make some minor adjustments and see what happens. First, let's select a waveform say Sawtooth. Press the button under key map. Enter the number 151 on your alphanumeric keypad and then press enter. You should see 151 Sawtooth. Press the right more button one time and press F2 Res for resonance. Using the cursor, highlight depth under source 1, then enter 0 on your keypad to clear the value. Press your up cursor once, then your left cursor once to highlight adjust. Set the adjust to 10.0 dB. Press the button under F3, amp, and set the adjust to 8 using your alpha wheel or minus plus buttons. Now play the keyboard and push the mod wheel up and down and listen to the filter sweep. <laughs> Let's try one more. Press the left more button, then the algorithm button. Next, turn your alpha wheel slowly to the right until you see four pole low pass with separation. Play the keyboard and notice the difference in filters. <laughs> The four pole completely screens out all frequencies, while the steep resonant bass didn't. Try assigning source one on the F1 frequency page to M pressure. To do this, press the right more button one time, then press the F1 button. Use your cursor to highlight source one. Enter 33 on your keypad, then the enter button, or scroll on your alpha wheel until you see M pressure. Now try playing a note and pressing down hard and listen to the filter sweep.
Let's name and save this program to complete this exercise. You may do this two different ways. First, you may press the button under the left more option until you come to name program. Press the button under name program and notice the options in the display. Delete will delete characters. Insert will insert a space. The left and right arrow buttons will move the cursor. The OK button should only be selected when naming has been completed. To change letters, you may use the alpha wheel, increment decrement buttons, or the alphanumeric keypad. Remember, the upper lower button changes from uppercase to lowercase letters, and the zero button will scroll through numbers zero through nine. Let's name this program Press Sweep One. When you have named this program, press OK. Next, press the button under Save Program. Notice the display will ask you if you wish to replace the original test program. If you weren't through editing, you would press Cancel. But since we are through, we want to save this program to the next available user program location. To do this, press both the minus and plus buttons simultaneously. Notice that now you will be saving to ID number 200, which is the first available user location. Press the button under Save, and the display will return to the algorithm page. Before we exit, let's take a closer look at the key map page. Press the key map button. Notice you can select and change the key map, which contains the sampled ROM waves. You can transpose and adjust the key map tracking from the keyboard or velocity and adjust the timbre shift parameter, which changes the timbre characteristics of the samples in the key map. You can set which control source, if any, will enable you to select a factory-defined alternate attack. The user may edit the factory alternate attack. You can select whether the samples play back normally, backwards, bidirectionally, or select noise, which disables the current key map in favor of a noise generator. Noise is often used to create wind and surf type programs. To exit this mode, press Exit. Notice that you are on program 200, press Sweep 1. Play the K2000 to be sure the program plays as it did before you saved it. Wow. Wow. To see the other way to save, we'll have to edit this program a bit. Let's once again enter the edit mode by pressing the edit button now. Press the down cursor one time to highlight the module four pole low pass with separation. Press the edit button once again to see the F1 frequency page and change the course adjustment to 17 hertz by rotating your alpha wheel one click to the right. Now press the exit button and notice the display prompts save press sweep one before exiting. Under this prompt are four options, rename, cancel, yes, and no. Let's rename this Press Sweep 2. Press the button under Rename Now. Next, press the button under the right arrow until the cursor is under the number 1. You may press either of the increment decrement buttons or the zero button, or you may turn your alpha wheel one click to the right to advance the number to number 2. When you're done, press the button under OK. The display will again prompt, save press sweep 2 before exiting, question mark. Press the button under the yes option. 
Notice the display asks you once again if you want to replace the original. Since you don't want to replace the original, but rather you want to save this as a new program, press both the decrement and increment buttons simultaneously to advance the next open user program location, which is program 201. Press the button under the save option, and the display will return to the normal program mode. Let's continue experimenting. Enter the edit mode by pressing the edit button. Press the down cursor button to highlight the four pole low pass with separation module. Pause the tape and continue rotating the alpha wheel and playing the keyboard while pressing harder and softer on the keyboard and you will hear some amazing things as a result of changing the kind of filter selected. To continue, set the middle module back to none. This is the end of the study of algorithm one, and we've only scratched the surface. Now it's time to define what a layer is. This is where most of your programming time will be spent. As you can see in the diagram, a layer is made up of many pages. Each layer is independent, and most parameters are available to you on a per layer basis. Take a moment to look through the available pages. Remember, only the effects and common pages are global, and these apply to all layers in a program simultaneously. We're going to be creating a program together that will familiarize you with the K2000. In this program, we'll use three layers, dual electric piano, ensemble strings, and dual electric bass. We'll learn how to assign the ensemble strings to the mod wheel, using the mod wheel as a volume control to allow real-time mixing. We're also going to assign the dual electric bass to the control slider, again, for real-time mixing. We're going to assign an LFO to the dual electric piano to control dynamic panning. And finally, we'll add an effect, and we'll name and save the program. When you're creating a multi-layered program, you can have four different options. You can, number one, add a new layer. This is bringing in just the raw sound. It's not adding any user-created envelopes or LFO or other modulation sources. Number two, you can duplicate a layer. This will copy the layer that you're currently looking at in your display. Or number three, you can import a layer. This is bringing in a sound from another program with all the editing, the sample plus the envelopes and modulation routings. Or number four, you can delete a particular layer. Remember, programs can have three layers. We've provided a special program called Drum Mode. This allows for up to 32 layers to be used at one time. Each layer can have its own custom DSP treatment for EQing or other application. We'll look more about Drum Mode later in Section 9, MIDI Operation. And we'll study closer the effects processor in Section 8, Effect Editing. Now, press Exit and then No to return to program mode. To begin, call up program 999 by pressing three nines and then Enter. You should be looking at Test Program again. Press the Edit button and rotate the alpha wheel one click to the right to select Algorithm 2. Next, press the down cursor to highlight two pole low pass. Turn your alpha wheel one click to the left, and none should appear. Next, let's select the dual electric piano key map. So we press the key map button to go into the key map page and scroll with your alpha wheel one click, and you will see dual electric piano. Now play to confirm you are hearing the dual electric piano. Notice the upper right side of the display showing we're on layer one of a one layer program. The left number always tells the layer you're viewing and the right number tells how many layers are in that particular program. Next, we'll be adding strings. So let's copy this layer and then you can switch the key map from dual electric piano to strings. To copy a layer, press the left more button one time and then press dupe layer. Notice the upper right side of the display 
shows you're on layer two of a two-layer program. Press the Write More button, then press the Key Map button. Now let's change the key map to strings by rotating our alpha wheel to the right, four clicks. Notice that ensemble strings are now on layer two. To see layer one, press either of the layer buttons to the left of the display. Pause the tape now a moment to confirm you have layered strings with the electric piano. Next, let's transpose the strings up one octave. So recall layer two to the display using the layer buttons if you're not already on the strings and press down your cursor to highlight transpose. You can enter the value on the alpha keypad or just use the alpha wheel and set the transpose for 12 ST or 12 semitones. Now let's play this to verify. An important note, all transposing is done on the key map page and not the pitch page. If you were to adjust pitch on the pitch page, you would be pitch shifting the sample playback, not transposing the original sample. This would result in a change in timbre as well as position on the keyboard. Now press the mute one button to silence layer one. Select the pitch button and play across the keyboard while rotating the alpha wheel to the left slowly. Hear the pitch shift effect on the strings layer. Now let's return this parameter to zero semitones.